Today we're working on a 2008 Nissan Quest. We're going to replace both camshaft position sensors. This process is going to be the same for any Nissan vehicle using the transverse or front wheel drive mounted V6. Um, so the first one is right here on the front. This is the first, um, or this is the one that usually fails and causes a check engine code. The one there in the back is a little bit harder to see. Well, it's actually very hard to see. Um, and it's a little bit more difficult to get to. So I'm gonna show you the process for this first one and you'll be able to kind of get an idea of what we have to do on the rear. I'll still video the rear, but I don't know that how much you'll be able to see. Um, I think I'm gonna remove a few things just so you can see this process a little easier, but you don't have to remove them. Um, we've gotta take this cover off just so the camera can kind of get in there. And then this intake tube needs to come off just so we can have a little bit of better access. Um, some cars or some engines are going to have an EGR tube, uh, which is right here, which kind of runs down in front of the camshaft sensor on the back. And so that one's going to make it a little bit more difficult. You're just going to have to use kind of some long tools uh, to get to that. So let me get the camera and a tripod and we'll start getting this thing opened up. Okay, we've got the engine cover off. Just so you guys can see this process a little bit better. You don't have to do this. Uh, but it just makes things a little easier. So we're going to remove this tube here. This tube doesn't have to really come off, um, but it's going to make it easier for you guys to see. Um, so first thing you're going to have to do when you get down to the sensor is depress this little green tab. You're just going to push on that, and then you can pull up on the wire or the body of the connector if the wire if it doesn't if it doesn't want to go. You don't want to pull the wires out. So let me try to do that with these pliers then. Sometimes these are a real pain in the butt. You almost need two people. <laughs> okay, there we go. So if yours doesn't pull up by the wire, try to grab the body with some pliers maybe. Now that we've got that out of the way, we can see our little 10 millimeter bolt there. The best tool for this job is going to be a swiveling 10 millimeter socket. Uh, I don't have one of those, so I'm going to try to make this one work. We've got a short 10 uh, on a U joint, so let's see if we can get this one out using that. So this is the setup I'm going to use. Also, if you're using a U joint like this, you can probably uh, fit a little quarter inch impact in here on an extension. pretty tight. Let's try a wrench to break it loose first. <sighs> there we go. I could kind of feel it stripping uh, with that socket on the U-joint there, so I really didn't want to mess it up. This is kind of a tight space, so it doesn't hurt to have a magnet ready to get this thing out. If you leave the uh, PCV tube there on the top, you really need to use a mag magnet because you can't get your hands inside there. Get this thing out close and then I should be able to reach that thing just fine. Okay, there we go. This thing will uh, kind of twist left and right to break the seal, and there we go. So these sensors are different. Um, they have a different angle to them. Let me grab the other one. It's really important that you use OEM sensors here. It's worth the extra cost, because you really don't want to end up doing this job again. And I have found over the years, OEM sensors just, uh, do the job and you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> uh, several times I've had to go back in using stuff from the aftermarket or the local parts store, especially Amazon, my goodness, and uh, replace brand new sensors. Sometimes they'll last a few miles, sometimes they won't last any miles at all. As soon as you put them in, they'll have a code. So this is the one that's, mo that's usually gonna cause uh, check engine light. For some reason, the rear one really doesn't seem to go bad. Uh, I don't know what the deal is. 
Maybe they're just made a little bit different. Um, I have no idea. It's a good thing to look inside the connector. Uh, look inside here and see if you see any oil. And if you do, you really want to make sure that you clean out the uh, wiring harness side connector with some uh, carb cleaner or electrical contact cleaner before you put everything back together. All right, so that is pretty much it. Uh, this thing is done. For 90% of you, this is all that you're gonna need to do to get rid of your check engine code. Just plug this sensor back in, put this hose back on, and you're done. That is it. Uh, for you guys that wanna stick around and watch me replace this rear sensor, we'll go ahead and get to that next. Most of you are not gonna have to do that. So you can end it right here. Okay, for those that are gonna go ahead and do the second sensor, let's get started on that. We've already got this hose disconnected, so now we'll work on the uh, two hose clamps here for this intake tube. Okay, got that guy out of the way. And this is gonna be pretty difficult to video. So let me go ahead and get my camera down inside here um, so I can show you everything ahead of time of what I'm gonna do because I don't know that you'll be able to see it in real time. All right, let's dive in here. So the sensor is uh, that thing with the green connector on it. You can see it has the same 10, 10 millimeter bolt to the left. It's got a little bit of green paint on it. So you can kind of see it there. So there it is. It's really not too hard to get to if you're using an extension. Uh, this EGR tube is gonna be a pain in the butt. Like I said, some vehicles have this and some don't. So it's up to you if you want to remove it. Um, you don't have to, to get to this. Uh, if you use a long extension, you can get down inside there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna leave this thing connected, I think, because it's gonna make getting the sensor in and out a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, we're gonna give that a shot. I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera back up in the tripod while I work on this. I uh, wish I could get a better video angle for you guys, but at least you can kind of see what you have to do. So let's get started. Okay. I'm gonna use a couple extensions stacked up, I think, to get this thing out. And I'm gonna go just right above this EGR tube, I think. <clears throat> That's gonna be the best way to do it. Yep, so you can see there, I've got this thing sticking out. Really not too hard to get to. There we go. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna be easier to leave that thing connected or not. Yeah, I think I'll leave it connected. Okay, I'm just loosening this bolt out. And I can reach it, so I don't need a magnet for this part. Okay, there it is. Now let's see if we can break that sensor loose. This one sticks uh, straight out. It does not have a 45 degree bend to it, like this front one does. Okay, got it out. I'm gonna bring it out here the front, same way I brought that bolt out. All right, there we go. So there's the sensor on the connector. Let's see if this thing gets stuck as bad as that front one did. I'm going to uh, depress this thing just like the other one. And let's see if it comes out. Yeah, there we go. Came right out. So you can see this one is straight, unlike the other one. Get our new sensor. Make sure you hear a click. And then we'll feed it back down inside there. Okay. 
Okay. All right, I've got it in place. I'm just gonna try to compress it past that O-ring. There we go. And rotate it into place so our bolt will go back in. I'm gonna feed the bolt back in there. Okay, I'm gonna start it. Try not to cross thread this thing. Because we're at a little bit of an angle, so. Cool, all right, it is in place. Okay. Alright, tighten it up and you're good to go. So I did this all in real time. Uh, you can see it only took a few minutes to get both of these sensors replaced. Really not that big of a deal. All you gotta do now is just put the intake tube back on and put your engine cover back on and you're good to go. So the tools that I used in this video were all pretty simple tools that you should have or be able to get very uh, inexpensively. We've got a 10 millimeter non-ratcheting wrench. I just used that to break this front bolt loose. Um, and then we used an extension here that's about, um, what is this, a three inch and a four inch, so a seven inch extension, quarter inch with a deep 10 millimeter socket. Um, and then I also used a U-joint or a swivel here in the front to get that front bolt out. I'm sure you could get it out with a wrench if you took enough time. Um, but yeah, using a swivel is just so much easier. So that is pretty much it. I'm gonna get this thing put back together uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching.